Welcome to the 132nd St. Paul Winter Carnival, the coolest celebration on earth. Thanks for joining us today for the King Boreas Grand Day Parade, brought to you by SPNN TV. My name is Tom LaSalle, and with me today on my right, I have Lindsay Sandoval, the 2017 Queen of the Lakes. <laughs> and on my left, Jason Bradshaw, Boreas 81 from 2017. Well, last night was a big night for you two. It was the uh, end of your reign. So how does it feel to give up your crown last night, Lindsay? I'm just excited for the 2018 Royal Family to experience what we got to experience this year. And they're going to have a lot of fun. So, so I'm excited to see the pictures. It's a big year. Yeah. So uh, how many things did you do this year? Did you count? We went to over 400 events this year. So we got to see a lot of St. Paul. We got to travel all over the U.S. So it's going to be home. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a little rest, right? <laughs> well, what made you want to be queen? Well, I had originally seen uh, Queen of the Snows for the first time when I was 17. I was Miss Farmington. And I um, was at the St. Paul Saints game to sing the national anthem. And I looked over and saw this beautiful woman dressed all in white. And just the way she was carrying herself, I was really inspired by her. And so ever since then, I wanted to run for Queen of the Snows. Ten years. Very cool. You were there singing the national anthem? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they let me sing at the deaf church. <laughs> Jason, how did you come into getting to be king? It's quite a uh, uh, commitment to agree to be uh, king for the Winter Carnival. Did, you, did they lie to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great question. So uh, we were asked about uh, a year ahead of time. And uh, it's, they tell you the commitment that it's going to be and uh, all the visits that you're going to make throughout the year and how, what a spectacular time it's going to be. But it's, it, it is a big decision. And uh, I remember sitting in my uh, Rotary Club, the St. Paul Rotary Club, and the historian came in from the St. Paul Winter Carnival and he talked about how uh, the carnival originally developed as a, as a way of bringing people of St. Paul together. And I thought, you know, I'll tell you, in a, in a day where everybody has a cell phone and uh, you're faxing this and, and everything, that we need things that bring people together. And that was really the convincing factor where I thought, hey, this is, this is an awesome thing for bringing the city of St. Paul together with all the people of different backgrounds that we have. And, and uh, it was kind of a no-brainer from there. But you're not the first one in your family to be part of Winter Carnival. No, my, uh, my father was actually a uh, North Wind uh, back in 1972. And so growing up, it was part of our family. And uh, it was sort of this, this extended family that we had. So it's, um, it was neat to carry on the tradition and be a part of it. Well, not everybody gets to be King Boreas. You have to be a pretty prominent volunteer in the Twin Cities and have been very active and had a lot of experience. Uh, it's not something you just walk out and do. You have to be able to talk to a lot of different people. Uh, you have to be able to contribute a great deal of time from your business. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, guys, you guys both did a, a fantastic job. Thank Why don't you tell us a little bit about your family, Lindsay? Well, I'm married and I have two stepsons, and um, they're running around today. But um, yeah, we live not too far from here, so we're just enjoying the winter time and yeah. Good. So who was the woman in white that uh, inspired you? It was 2008 Queen of the Snows, Brooke Stokel. She was the one who lit the spark. That's very cool. I was Commodore for the Minneapolis Aquatennial in 2009. Mm -hmm. And the first uh, event I went to was uh, the last event for the 2008 Winter Carnival. So I was there with, uh, with Bill Fussard. He yep. was king. Yep. And with... Uh, uh, with the Queen and same people. Mm -hmm. So I met Brooks then. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I learned how to be Commodore from uh, the Prime Minister of the Winter <laughs> Carnival. He told me what to do. I was shocked. I had no <laughs> idea what I'd gotten involved in. <laughs> well, today, folks, we got a lot, of, uh, a lot of fun people coming at you in the parade. Boreas, you're, you're, look at this. You, you, <laughs> retired, uh, you retired last night. The new Boreas has taken over, and it's snowing. I think he's bringing snow. Uh, this is the perfect start to a Grand Day Parade. Mm -hmm. doesn't get any better than this. You know, I read 35 degrees and sunny this morning. So <laughs> some, uh, somehow it, it's St. Paul, you just can't, you can't ever trust it. Well, folks, there's going to be a lot to do this week. We'll talk about some of that as we, uh, as we get going here. The... Uh, uh, typical kinds of things that, that go on in Winter Carnival is uh, we had the Royal Coronation, Coronation last night. Mm -hmm. Today we have the Grand Day Parade. There'll be an outdoor beer dabbler festival. 
the medallion hunt, of course, is going on. Dog sled races, kids' day, snow sculpting, ice sculpting. Right behind us, you can see the ice sculptures. Uh, they're staying frozen this year. Recommend you do it. Fonday Kate has a cabaret that's fun to go to. And uh, we'll have a torchlight parade this year in two weeks. Uh, the Winter Carnival is going an extra week because of the uh, Super Bowl. And uh, we will have the torchlight parade instead of next Saturday. It'll be the Saturday after that. Some of the things uh, that are going on in Rice Park this week, uh, I think the biggest one's pretty obvious if you look behind us. You want to uh, tell us a little bit about the Ice Palace and uh, kind of what went into that, Jason? Oh, it's spectacular. Uh, this is uh, our, obviously our latest ice palace. It's over 70 feet tall, uh, 4,000 blocks of ice, and 2 million pounds. And uh, it, it is a absolutely spectacular uh, building and structure. Um, we're so privileged to have it here, I'll tell you. I heard there was a fatality in the uh, construction that we lost a walleye. Yes, uh, Wally the walleye is somewhere in one of those ice blocks, and we're not sure how that happened, but uh, but he's there. Uh, you can, uh, Lindsay, you can buy an ice block, can't you? Yeah, you can, absolutely. You can go online, and they're $25 to sponsor an ice block. So we need everybody to do that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yep, they're still raising money, so you can go online and get a certificate of your own. Uh, Dan Schultz with Spire Credit uh, came up there uh, not that many weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, took mm -hmm. over the fundraising, and... Managed to get it going and uh, got the ice uh, uh, palace <laughs> funded. You know, you always want to call it the ice castle. In fact, and a lot of us refer it to that, but it's not, is it? It's, it's an ice palace. What's the difference? Well, I'm glad to bring that up because uh, a palace, it's actually King Boreas's residence, and a palace is a resident. Residence as opposed to a castle is a fortress that keeps things out and so because this is something that brings our city together It's a palace we come to where Boreas uh, lives and uh, and it's supposed to be a welcoming place Well the ice sculpture garden uh, is over here. I haven't been able to get out there yet I don't know if you've seen it. It's usually pretty. It's really amazing what you can do with a, a chainsaw <laughs> the uh, I, I can make ice cubes and that's about <laughs> as uh, far as uh, far as I'll go. In fact, that I, I don't do that anymore. The refrigerator does it for me. The, uh, some of the other things that are back there now, there's a whole music series, isn't there, this mm -hmm. year? What, do you know anything about that? What's going on in that? Yeah, there's new music going on every day, and so um, they have a bunch of different bands for all, all different types of people and all different um, ages. So yeah, they're doing their thing. Well, the one I'm curious about is the Barefoot uh, Winery. <laughs> where you can uh, you can get hot mulled wine, cold beer, uh, the uh, and uh, I, get, I imagine wine, right? The uh, so the, the, there's a 2018 music series entertainment lineup uh, that's out now. I think you can find that online and see uh, who's playing, what time. Plan on doing some of that. Kids Day is a fun time. Mm -hmm. uh, the State Fairgrounds. Yes. Uh, what's going on there? They have the Vulcan Snow Park there, so there's a huge um, snow slide that kids can go down on, and they've got a bunch of different snow sculptures up there. It's pretty cool. It is cool. Mm -hmm. The you know speaking of Vulcan, uh, <laughs> you know they're uh, they're kind of talking a lot last night about how they're going to overthrow King Boreas. Uh, I, I don't know this year. King Boreas is two weeks to get his uh, act together. <laughs> it might be hard. I think King Boreas looks pretty strong this year. He does. I, uh, he does. You know, it's you been know. 131 years that unfortunately he has not been able to come through at the end of Carnival. But yeah, it's not a good I, record. No, I, they, I, uh, but I think he's looking strong. Yeah, you know, every year we, uh, we think it's that year. But uh, you know, a couple of years ago we had a pretty young king. We thought uh, he had a chance. Last year uh, the guard was celebrating 100 years. and. That's uh, right. You know, they apparently had gotten quite old. Uh, it didn't, uh, they weren't doing very well trying to stop them. But it's a lot of fun, folks, to come out two weeks from now. I think that's February 10th. See the, uh, uh, and this will tell you how Vulcan feels about it. It's, they consider it the uh, celebration parade. They, don't yep. even, they haven't done it yet, and they're celebrating. The, uh, so there's a lot of fun things. The uh, Frozen Family Fun Night, which is uh, January, Tuesday the 30th at Rice Park. That's a, fun, that's a fun event for the whole family. Uh, they have some book readings that they do in the park. They have some kids' bands that are in there. Uh, we brought our kids last year, and they just had a great time. Right. And, uh, you know, Carnival is all about families. It's all about bringing our communities together, our families together. 
And this is an example of just a, a spectacular evening in the park. So yeah. we loved it. And the weather Tuesday and Wednesday is supposed to be just perfect for a winter carnival. Absolutely. I think we're in the teens. <laughs> the, uh, on Wednesday then is disco night. Lindsay, you'll be for that, right? Oh, definitely. I'll be cutting up a rug. The, wait, well, I don't think you're going to have to cut some ice. <laughs> it says, break out your best <laughs> disco attire. And I'll tell you, this is a group that I think there's a possibility. I, I had the uh, opportunity to go to Tallahassee, Florida with them uh, to springtime Tallahassee. We, uh, I have business there, so I tagged along because I wanted to get uh, my people in Tallahassee involved in uh, festival because festival is such a great way to meet people in a community and, and to get involved. And uh, they had a, uh, I'm not sure what it was one night, but uh, the uh, Winter Carnival got up and did YMCA in, in costume. So I expect to see something Wednesday night. <laughs> It might not have been one of our finer moments, but uh, it certainly was fun. It was one of your braver moments. I'll give, I'll give you that. I'm up for a lot of things, but I, I'm not sure I'd uh, go with that. But you know, you've got someone who can sing, someone who can dance. You guys had everything. So then uh, Ladies' Day, Sunday, uh, next Sunday, February 4th, is Ladies' Day at Winter Carnival. So shopping, fashion shows, designer purse bingo, live fitness classes. All this is at the Landmark Center, right over uh, to our right behind us. A lot's going on there. Thursday, February 8th is Cinco de Mayo night. Cinco de Mayo is a partner of Winter Carnival mm -hmm. and festival. And uh, uh, so it's Minnesota's iciest celebration meets Minnesota's spiciest celebration. So Tom, what do you think about that jalapeno eating contest? Are you up for that this year? You know, at my age, uh, there's things you just <laughs> don't really ever consider. The, uh, I had Indian food last week, and I'm almost recovered. The, uh, so let's talk about the palaces. One of the things I was surprised to learn, how many palaces do you think there have been, folks, in the past? Anybody guess? Five? 36. There have been 36 ice palaces. Pretty shocking. I had no idea. The first one was in 1887, had 35,000 blocks of ice, and uh, it was 140 feet high, 217 feet uh, long, and 194 feet uh, wide. And Jason, what was the most amazing part? It had electric lights. Well, actually, that was the first electrically lit building in St. Paul, was the first ice palace. Yeah, so 200 electric lights. spectacular. And I mean, to appreciate 1887, lights were a big feature in the 1898-99 World's Fair. They were brand new. I mean, I was very surprised to, uh, to see that. Well, the weather, you know, the weather's not always been uh, certain. And uh, you see that as you go through some of the ice palaces and read about what happened. In, in uh, 1896, uh, the January thaw hit, and they were building Fort Carnival. It, it ended up being uncompleted, but it had a restaurant, two 600-foot toboggan slides, and a Dakota Sioux Indian village. Uh, they had to postpone, the, in those days, the overthrow was called the storming of Fort uh, Carnival by King Cole, who now a modern-day uh, Vulcan, but it was postponed due to a thunderstorm. <laughs> But you, you, one thing you see clearly in, uh, in these original uh, uh, ice palaces, liability wasn't as big of an issue. <laughs> the uh, number of uh, how they built them, the, the amount of ice, the, uh, they had restaurants in them. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, in, in 1938, on Dayton's Bluff, they built uh, Windsor Castle design. Uh, and uh, it was supposed to be 205 by 300 feet and 60 feet tall. Once again, due to high temperatures, it didn't get built. And at the last minute, a 60-foot facade was built in one week to replace the original design. So it's, it's uh, pretty tricky stuff building a, uh, an ice palace. Yeah, the original ice palaces actually uh, were bar was uh, borrowed from Montreal, Canada, where they had a winter festival up there. And uh, so that, that was something that came down here because of an epidemic that uh, broke out up there. And St. Paul decided to jump in and get, this, uh, get the palaces started. So um, 
There's a wonderful history with the ice palaces, no question. A lot of history around, uh, around St. Paul Winter Carnival. Uh, when I was a kid, I grew up in St. Paul, and we would come down to the uh, Grand Day Parade. Things were a little different then. We'd come down on the bus at age 10, go to the parade, go back home on the bus, or worse yet, hitchhike. <laughs> the, uh, those are the things we didn't tell anyone we were doing. The, uh, I think it was in 1986, uh, we had an ice palace uh, at Phelan Park that was uh, very impressive. That one had 10,042 by 42 by 23 uh, inch ice blocks. Uh, I remember uh, my wife was pretty impressed with the idea. We put the kids in the car at three in the morning because you couldn't get near it. And even then we had to wait in line to see the ice palace. The big draw is I told the kids we could go get donuts. It took an hour <laughs> to find somewhere you could buy donuts at 3.30 in the morning. The, I'll tell you, uh, Tom, that was the first ice palace that I kind of remember right there, and that's one that really sticks in my mind. And, and uh, obviously you've seen the picture over the years done by Leroy Neiman, a uh, St. Paul native who uh, did the famous ice palace picture that uh, made it nationally. This is the part where you tell me your dad put you in the car as a kid at 3.30 at <laughs> right? Yeah. The, uh, so, let's, some of the other things. What are some of the other things you did as king and queen? Well, I'll tell you, we, uh, as, as our queen said, we made about 400 appearances last year. And so we had the opportunity to be out visiting schools, nursing homes, uh, traveling the U.S. all the way from Winnipeg, Canada to Bradenton, Florida. Mm -hmm. And absolutely makes, made some spectacular friends. And uh, I will have to say that, you know, we did our best to be great ambassadors for the city of St. Paul. And it's amazing when you can be down in a place like Tallahassee or Bradenton, and all of a sudden there's people yelling, Hail Boreas. <laughs> and uh, you sort of feel right at home. And you realize that connection that you can develop with communities through festivals. And uh, what a special place that festivals have at kind of the heart and soul of a community. What was your favorite thing, Lindsay? Actually, we took a trip down to um, Macon, Georgia, and that was probably my favorite trip. I'm uh, originally from Nashville, from the south, and I have family in Georgia, so I just felt kind of right at home back with the southern hospitality, sweet tea, and bringing, bringing the cool air down there a little bit. <laughs> well, that's the Cherry Blossom Festival, yeah. where yep. the cherry blossoms blossomed. Mm -hmm. Well, some of them, but yeah, the majority of them weren't. <laughs> it, they're not reliable, Yeah. the timing, because yeah. I've been to that festival, and... Uh, I, I heard the same thing I hear when I go skiing. You should have been here last week. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, yeah. I think we saw just about everything at that parade, didn't we? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that festival all the way, f I mean, everybody had everything pink on. Yeah. And yeah. I remember even seeing a pink poodle. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think I even saw you in, like, pink heels. Is that what, is that, what that was? Uh, oh, yeah. you were in the run. <laughs> well, there was a uh, high heel uh, race, and I don't think we're going to talk about that anymore. But, so, uh, so, folks, in, uh, in, uh, at that festival, they have a high heel race with the men. Is that something we should add to Winter Carnival? Yes. What do you think? High heel races? <laughs> you, would you participate? <laughs> All right, we have a volunteer here with a St. Thomas hat on. So. Automatic winner, right? I went yeah, to, those Tommies, they're always up for anything. I, I, went, I went to Cretan. I can understand why he'd do it. The, uh, so anyway, the royal family, uh, for those of you who don't know, is made up of more than the uh, king and the queen. There's a prime minister. What's his job, Lindsay? Or her. We have, a, we have both. Well, they really keep us all in line, make sure that we all get where we need to need to be and make sure that um, we're doing what we are supposed to be doing and they we also um, do nightings when we go to various events so they make sure that we are able to um, call out certain people that have been suggested to receive this honor of being knighted and so and, we recognize them and those are people in those communities that mm -hmm. have uh, made a difference mm -hmm. and they're they you get the uh, names from the community don't you yeah absolutely so people can um, they can nominate somebody that they would like us to knight and just to just to honor them and say something nice about them and then we pin a medal on them. And the communities are very honored to get that because, you know, in a in a community when you have uh, one of those coronations, half the people are volunteers. Yeah. And uh, and they go back generations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to get a, to get knighted is a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, same with getting a Commodore's medal. We uh, we see people uh, break down when they get them. Now, Tom, you have a little history with that, don't you? With being knighted? Kind of some uh, royalty in, in your own blood there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been, uh, I've been around festival for a while. I think I've had just about everything done to me. <laughs> 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 the, uh, 
So now the other thing is we have the captain of the king's guard, the sergeant of the king's guard, the king's guards, pillow guards, all these guards. Other than losing to uh, Vulcan 131 times, <laughs> what else do they do? <laughs> well, those are really, uh, they're the ones who kind of make it happen. And uh, they, they help us through the whole year, making everything run smooth and uh, really add a lot to the uh, kind of the pomp and circumstance of coming into a group, uh, coming into a room. I mean, when they, uh, when they hike in with their swords and everything, it's like, okay, we're, the show's on, here we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Lead us in. Now in the legend of Boreas, King Boreas, you have four uh, brothers. Absolutely. So we have Titan, who is the prince of the north wind. We have Euros, the prince of the east wind. Zephyrus, the prince of the west wind. And Notos, the prince of the, uh, balmy south wind and uh, traditionally uh, those characters have been put forward by some of the local business associations uh, there's four major streets that lead out of downtown st paul and traditionally each one of those represented a uh, place on the compass and those business associations would put forward a, uh, a person to take on one of those roles so because our business growing up was on rice street uh, that's why my dad was the uh, was the titan so that's kind of some of the origins there and and uh, again, part of part of the beginnings of Carnival. There's a lot of tradition in Winter Carnival. Mm -hmm. Winter Carnival's done a great job, in my observation, of uh, keeping things together. Each of these organizations has its own fraternal organization. It's very active in the community. Uh, you'll see them come through the parade, folks. They'll, uh, they all have trucks. We'll talk, tell you what they do and who they are when they come in. But one of the wins has kind of got a bit of a nefarious reputation. Uh, Natos, uh, what, what, uh, I, Yeah, Natos is a little, uh, a little untrustworthy. Yeah. Uh, he would be, <laughs> represent the balmy south wind. And, uh, I hope it works out a little bit different this year, but usually at the end of the carnival, uh, he's oftentimes been a traitor to Boreas and has gone over to the Vulcan side and he, uh, he does wear the color red. So, uh, yeah. I always kind of watch him. You just kind of never know quite what's going to happen, <laughs> but, uh, he's got a heart of gold. You know, I've announced a lot of those overthrows and you're doing pretty well until we see him switch sides. That's, it is disheartening, it and I remember like standing there last year. Pivotal and it's, position, pivotal yeah. position. Yeah, it's 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 hard to watch. Well, what each one of those wins have a uh, princess. Yes, they do. So, yep. you want to tell us a little bit about them? Yeah. So, with each of the wins, we have a princess. So, there's the North Princess, the East Princess, there's the um, West princess and the south princess and so um our north wind princess she uh represents the cold and the the wind and so then we also have the east wind princess she's kind of more of a middle eastern kind of feel and then we have a west princess and she is um, more of like a western cowgirl and southern uh princess is south wind and she's olay Olay. She does ooh la la yes. <laughs> everywhere she goes. <laughs> she's definitely a spicy, uh, yeah, she the is. spicy one, yeah. Yep. She gets the most exercise. <laughs> yeah, she does. does, it's true. <laughs> now, those, those young ladies are selected out yeah. of the same uh, process you are. Yep, absolutely. So last year we had about 21 candidates, and so they choose, um, and last night we had about 14 candidates, and so they chose them right in news order, and then they chose the queen last. Yeah, it's quite the, uh, if you haven't seen a winter carnival coronation, you ought to see one. Uh, I can think of a lot of words. Spectacle comes to mind, <laughs> and, uh, but it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, th I think last night we had about 1,200 people in the oh, room for that. It was it just absolutely out. spectacular. It sells out. I buy a table every year, uh, and uh, I'm never disappointed. It's, it's lots and lots of fun. I'll tell you, one of the things that is fun about it is, is seeing all these different festivals from communities within Minnesota that all show up to Coronation. And these people that you've met throughout the year when we've been out to, you know, all the way from New Brighton to Duluth to Fairmont, and they're all showing up to our coronation. And, and it's a, uh, I'll tell you, that's where you just feel kind of the smallness, the hominess, uh, how special it is to live in Minnesota. Well, festival is a great place to be, folks, and it's a great place to volunteer. I would encourage any of you out there to, uh, if you're not volunteering <clears throat> in some way, you're missing out. You get a lot more out of volunteering then you, uh, you give out. Mm -hmm. You volunteer with Winter Carnival, you get a hat like this, you get hand warmers, complimentary beverages and food, chances to win fabulous prizes, and most importantly, you'll make a lot of friends. 
One of the things I, I'm thinking seriously of starting festivalmatch.com. <laughs> the number of marriages that I've seen come out of festival is unbelievable. Yep. But when you think about it, what a safe place to meet people yeah. and mm -hmm. what a variety of people right. you meet. Right. You know, uh, it's a place where you'll see folks uh, who have all different jobs, all different professions mm -hmm. getting together. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like we're going to have a parade. Okay. Are you ready for a parade? Woo! Led off by St. Paul's finest. Well, everybody warm out there and ready? Let's hear it for the parade as it comes. Woo! All right. <laughs> so leading the parade, we're going to have the American Legion. This is the 4th District American Legion family. They have a current membership of over two and a half million wartime veterans. It's the largest veterans organization in the U.S. Legionnaires work for the betterment of their communities through more than 14,000 posts across the nation. Thank you, folks. They're a perennial uh, Winter Carnival Parade uh, participant. It's always great to see you. Coming up behind, we have the Blue Star Mothers. Proudly supporting our military, veterans, and the fallen. Another perennial member of the band, the St. Paul Police Band. St. Paul Police Band is an organization built, with, uh, built on traditions, public relations, and music ship, musicianship. They were founded uh, in 1923 by a trio of St. Paul police officers. They perform in several concerts in the St. Paul metropolitan area and marches in many uh, regional uh, festival parades each year. In fact, I bet you saw them out on the uh, trail. Coming up next, we have the uh, Winter Carnival Snowflakes. Good to see you again. Each of those snowflakes weighs 10 pounds and they're carried by the uh, lot of River Falls uh, Wisconsin ambassadors. Here comes the St. Paul Fire Department. We have a special thanks to the St. Paul Fire Department. We're sitting on engine 10 from fire station number one at uh, West 7th and Randolph. Ogle, uh, Colin Oglesby, who grew up across the street from me and was best friends with my oldest son, arranged this for us. Thank you, Colin. We appreciate it. This is a great view from up here, and I feel very safe in a fire engine. Yes. The, uh, right here we have the uh, City of St. Paul Police Department Mobile Command Unit. That's a boat you never want to see. <laughs> never a good sign. The, uh, they're part of it. They also uh, have, and maybe they'll we'll catch up here a little behind, they have a uh, command center that's like a, uh, uh, it's a mobile command center. It's like an office on wheels, office building, for extended deployment of emergency operations on remote uh, locations. It's used in special events like Red Bull ice cr uh, uh, crashed ice last week. Everybody come out and see crashed ice last week. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. We actually got to go up to the top and meet some of the athletes. Did you do it? Well, uh, <laughs> I didn't go down myself. I was just trying not to fall. I was just Aurora, to I think, there. was actually wanting to skate down it, but they, uh, it they said maybe this wouldn't be the year to start <laughs> that tradition. You know, it was a time when I would have done that. I played <laughs> hockey until I was 38. Oh, and, wow. uh, the, uh, but then I, uh, I watched people do it a few times, and I've already had one hip replaced, so I'm not sure <laughs> that... Uh, that would have been the uh, the smartest thing to do. Well, get, getting back to uh, to volunteerism, folks, you'll see folks out here. A lot of them will have blue jackets or red jackets or hats like this. Nobody's getting paid. Winter Carnival is. Uh, I believe there's one or two paid staff in Winter Carnival. Everyone else volunteers. Uh, as we talked about earlier, each one of the the Star Arboreus, the past queens, the I believe past princesses, and each of the winds have their own organizations. Yep, uh, you now are officially in the Star Arboreus. Absolutely, it's quite an honor. So I think that's one of the things that makes Carnival so special is, is it's those alumni groups that, that stay on for years and years. And uh, we've attended some of those functions over the past few weeks. And when you see people showing up that were involved in 1950, 
and uh, sometimes earlier. I mean, it's it's spectacular, and that's where you really feel kind of the roots of St. Paul. It's it's a big deal. It is amazing how they uh, they they just stay active, and they do a lot during the year for the community. Absolutely. Yeah, there's the ambassador organization, and they actually uh, hold events all throughout the year to raise money for the royal ladies' wardrobes. So they do events all throughout the year. That's great, and they and you've done a good job of keeping them involved. You know, that's it's not easy to keep track. The younger people uh, finish school, move on, have children, grow up. <laughs> the uh, unfortunately, we lose some. They leave. Mm -hmm. You know, move somewhere else in the country. But uh, last night, we had a lot of past princesses and a lot of past queens. And that's yeah. great to see. We also had a lot of Aquitennial people last night, mm -hmm. you know, past. Uh, and we have a lot of people who go uh, across the river and uh, do, uh, do both. We have. Uh, Is that to that other city on the, uh, the other side of the I'm trying to river? think of the name of it. Uh, um. the, uh, but uh, it's, isn't it, it's a suburb of St. Paul, isn't it? The, yes. Uh, they have. Uh, but we've had uh, several, uh, we've had some couple past Boreas's that have been Commodore. They call them Borecoms. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Vulcan who's been a Commodore, a Vulcanus Rex who's been a Commodore. Most so, recently, our uh, Boreas uh, 79, Dan Stoltz. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, again, yes. uh, the uh, 2015. St. Paul Winter Carnival Boreas that went on to become the Commodore. 2016. Six months later. Yeah, he uh, he didn't take a break. He, he stayed right at it. That's commitment. Yeah, uh, that's a word for it. Okay. So Melvin Carter is the fourth generation St. Paul resident. He's a St. Paul Public School graduate, former St. Paul City Council member, father. He lives in St. Paul Rondo neighborhood with his wife, Sakina, and three of their five children. He actually has been working to engage and franchise and uplift people in St. Paul and across the state and nation. He's trained political candidates, community organizers, and campaign staff in over 30 states and several national organizations, including Wellstone Action. And he was actually a former junior royalty. So yeah, we, we're partial to him. So <laughs> we, should, uh, we should get a lot more action out of the mayor for Winter Carnival now that we have uh, a former uh, participant. And we actually, Jason, we met um, one of his uncles, I believe, at one of our visits. One of, the, one of, one of our, our visits, visits yeah. that we went to, yeah. Long history in St. Paul. He's a good guy. Well, we've got a hot air balloon coming. They're very popular on uh, on a cold day in a parade. You get to <laughs> uh, you get to warm up yeah. uh, a lot. The, uh, You feel it from here. <laughs> it can just stay yeah, over those here. balloon baskets, they kick out a lot of BTUs. Have you ever gone hot them. air ballooning? I did once. Yeah, I did, was, I, I did, I did it once, too. too. I did it once, yeah. We are. We will. It actually feels kind of good right yeah. now. Yeah. It feels really good. And uh, <laughs> speaking of uh, Boreas Dan Stoltz, we have the uh, Spire Credit Union coming along here. <laughs> And uh, again, Dan is the uh, the head of Spire Credit Union, been serving Minnesota and Wisconsin for 83 years, uh, with 16 locations, including one in St. Paul Lower Town, striving to improve your financial well-being. I think Dan uh, isn't going to be with them today. I think Dan's job this year is uh, leading Star the uh, Star Boreas group. So we'll we'll be seeing Dan later in the parade. Yeah, Dan should be coming behind shortly. So thank you, Spire Credit Union, also a major sponsor for our uh, Ice Palace. Mm -hmm. Spire's been a great sponsor in the community. They, uh, Spire brought, uh, helped us bring back uh, the milk carton boat uh, yeah. races yeah. last summer. Yeah. And uh, we're hoping that we can uh, keep that going in, uh, in the, the next year. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we did a little different this year. We had boats ready for people when they got there. Uh, so people could sign up and race, and uh, we did those on uh, Lake Calhoun, but there's yeah. no reason we can't do them on any lake. We've yeah. talked about bringing them to, to some of the St. Paul lakes and making that a moving event during the summer. Wow, that would be, that'd be really fun. The, uh, and they actually have some little Spire trucks hidden in the palace, in the, in the ice palace, in the ice Well, block. Lindsay, here comes a, a Pioneer Press. They've got something going on this week, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they've got the treasure hunt, and they post clues every day through um, February 1st until the medallion is actually found. And um, 
the winner of the medallion will actually receive a $10,000 prize. So I'm sure everybody's following. You can follow along and you can actually register still, I believe. But you can follow along on Twitter at hashtag PP Hunt and so also on Facebook as well. Have you ever gone treasure hunting? I, I have, but not for the medallion. I would love to do that someday. You know, I uh, grew up in Highland Park right by the golf course. So we went treasure hunting every year yeah. in Highland Golf Course, regardless of the clues. Because <laughs> that's all the further we could go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. We never found Sense of it. adventure. Oh, it's a lot of fun. I'll tell you, you meet some interesting people when you go out there. <laughs> Jason, what's this? Well, let's see. We have the 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Got junk, just a point, and we will make it disappear. So they send two guys in a truck, and they will lift and load items from anywhere in your home or business. They take away almost anything two guys can manage, and uh, they actually recycle about 60% of all the things that they take away, so. Yeah, that's great that they do that. You know, it's a, it's a good way to get it. So we have Associated Bank here. I think they're lost. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, uh, the, wild, yeah. the wild seem to have wandered out of their rink. <laughs> good to see you, welcome to the parade. Yeah, please actually, welcome Minnesota Wild broadcasters Tom yeah. Reed and Mike Greenlay. Hear them live on wild radio and television broadcasts throughout the state of hockey. Go wild. I'll tell you something that I saw online that was interesting about them. They, their water, uh, the specifically in the frozen form, it's a natural element that binds the state of hockey together. Starting this season, the XL Energy Center ice includes water from wild fans, local hockey ponds, lakes, and, and rinks. And here we have the Osceola High School Marching Band. Uh, they've been marching in the St. Paul Winter Carnival Parade for over 20 years. And I'll tell you, they have been uh, major supporters. They show up at all the coronations and everything that we've been a part of this year. So they hit local parades like Columbia Heights, Blaine, Maple Grove, Hopkins, Minneapolis, and River Falls. Join them at their hometown parade, Winged Wheels and Wings, the first Sunday after Labor Day. band like that I think is just spectacular. That's a lot of fun. You know, and remember in the summer parades when you see them in these same con uh, yeah. uniforms and it's uh, 100 degrees in their wool? I always like when they have people spraying water on them and picking them up as they <laughs> fall down. The, uh, it's tough being in a band in the summer. Yeah. Up next we have the media grand marshals. We've got Lindsey Brown and Kevin Duran. Five Eyewitness News and 45 TV are the proud media sponsors of the St. Paul Winter Carnival. Make sure to make plans to join Chief Meteorologist Dave Dahl on Saturday, February 10th from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Vulcan Torchlight Parade. You know, KSTP and uh, 45 TV, they're great sponsors of Winter Carnival. They're, they join us uh, every year I can remember and we really appreciate uh, their help and their uh, promoting Winter Carnival on uh, the, the, the two stations. Mm -hmm. It's very, it makes, makes, brings these people out. It's how we get so many people. Mm -hmm. 
So, are you having fun at the parade? <laughs> How about it, kids? You like this parade? Everybody staying warm? <laughs> Well, we've got uh, we got some people for you to meet coming up. We yes. talked a lot about the coronation last night. Yep. So the group that uh, the slow moving group, I think the uh, the royal family, they got to pick it up if they're going to get through this year, don't you think? <laughs> no, I think so. <laughs> Today is really they're coming out, yeah. and yeah. I'll tell you after uh, they had a long night. I know the uh, the queen and the princesses that were up the entire night getting fitted for yes. all their uh, clothing for the next ten days. Yep. And uh, it's, it's, uh, they're beginning a pretty grueling schedule, about 100 visits over the next 10 days. Now this is a novice parade going here. This is meandering. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they haven't had their coffee yet this morning. <laughs> it could be they possible. They probably haven't been to bed yet. <laughs> yeah, it could be possible. Yeah. Well, who are we going to see here? Well, we're, we're going to see. We've got the, the winds and the wind princesses right up here up front. We've got the, the north winds right here, and in the middle we've got the east winds, and we've got our south winds over there, and they're doing their all lays. <laughs> so our, uh, our north wind is uh, Bob uh, Flood, and the north wind princess, Elizabeth Mark. We've got the east wind, Bill uh, Wern here. Now that's a courageous wind to wear that. Heather Westling is the uh, east wind uh, princess. princess yep. Who else is here? Where's, uh, I see uh, there's the, uh, the south uh, wind. Yeah, we have the very uh, balmy south wind here. Steve, and we've got south wind princess Jacqueline. So uh, didn't, didn't, you, uh, didn't you guys used to do something like this? King Boreas, Tom, go. Tom Leonard, and Queen of the Snows, Jillia, Jillia Nadimi. Welcome. Yep, Jilla. We got Jilla and Aditi as the 2018 Queen of the Snows. And behind them we, got our we have Prime Minister. We we're talking about Star Boreas. That's Star Boreas, and uh, the good-looking ones are queens. <laughs> They're all the pretty ones. The old ones are kings. <laughs> I tell you, Welcome I remember this guys. parade from last year. This was, a, uh, this was an Hi, amazing Amy. parade, and this was kind of the coming out. So That's our young uh, queen, yeah, or that, king that you were talking about earlier, our young the youngest, king. The youngest the king. The baby king. He, holds, he, he, he stays at the back to see that none of them are lost. <laughs> There's Dan Stoltz. Dan, we talked about hello. Dan. Dan's how we got our, uh, our ice palace. Let's hear it for Dan. Woo. Spire credit. Thanks, folks. And then we've actually got Brooke here, and she was the one who inspired oh, me. Oh, Brooke, yeah. yeah. We got the junior royalty right here. We got Angelica, Alex, Lindsay, Isabella. <laughs> Here's our uh, senior royalty coming up. <laughs> so here we Queen have Kari some additional Boreuses that are out yep. in front those of us. Are, those are the Boreuses that didn't want to walk. <laughs> Every uh, once a year they break out those big white fluffy coats that yeah. they so wear Mickey, for this So Mickey, how did they get you to drive? Bet you that was tough. <laughs> Look, we got a few more over here. And then we got the senior royalty coming up here. So we've got King Winter the 60th, Dan Munson, Queen of the Northlands, Christina, Prime Minister, Shirley, Lady-in-Waiting, Linda, Princess of the Four Winds, Judy Holmquist. And they've been doing this for 60 years of the senior royalty. That's how long have they been running for? We had a, just a terrific year with the seniors this past year, and uh, I'll tell you, they're a fun crew. They got more energy than we did, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, here comes a very, very important part of the, uh, of the parade, the Tux team. The Tux team uh, cleans up after everyone, and uh, well, hopefully only the horses. <laughs> we have horse-drawn hay rides. The uh, seniors are riding in this year. That looks like a lot of fun, great thing to do. Tux team is uh, giving samples out if you're interested. <laughs> Bring your own baggie. Well, folks, we talked to you a lot about the, uh, the different organizations, and now for the, the next uh, few minutes, you're going to get a good look at them as they start to roll up here. Thank you, Tux team. We appreciate it.
If you're interested in joining the Tux team, it's... Uh, they got a close-up of the senior royalty. Yeah, they've been running for 60 years. Yeah, this year, 60 uh, years. They just had their celebration. They're a lot of fun. They do a lot, don't they? Yeah, they do. More energy than we do. Well, here comes the uh, the Northwind Titan organization. Yes. This would be uh, better known as the Best Wind. <laughs> the Titan organization are all the former princes of the Northwind. Can you, uh, can you tell they wrote that? Can you tell they wrote that for us? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've also got some visiting royalty with them as well. We've got on uh, the Rice Street Festival Queen. Oh, I got it. Here is, you go. Uh, uh, there's our <laughs> North Wind from 2017, Eric Paterka. All right. And, and Princess, Princess Joe Joe Smith. Yes. Well, We've also got the represent, representing uh, St. Paul's North End. Yeah. Hail the Titans, hail the North. And we've also got our South Dakota Snow Queen Festival visiting dignitaries as well. All right, they're on the truck with them there. <laughs> so now we've got our East Winds coming up here. I'll tell you, Tom, this is the neat part right here. This is where you kind of see the depth of these organizations, yep. we the have people a, that stick with it after. Yep. These have all been wins before, and they're uh, they're staying around and representing. We have a uh, we have a lost uh, we have a lost uh, child in the middle of the street here. It's a uh, a former prime minister. He looks like kind of a lost prime minister out well, here. What uh, time do you have to be back to the home? He's working the crowd. <laughs> all right. Well, now this uh, next organization, I think this is the bravest of all the brothers. <laughs> the uh, the costumes, uh, and you got to be a fun person with a really good self-image yeah. to do this. <laughs> Lindsay, you want to tell us a little bit about Absolutely. them? Absolutely. These are the former East Winds and their families. They support the city and the Winter Carnival and recruit and mentor new East Winds every year. They are the protectors of the legend of Euros, who was granted by King Boreas to control irresponsible East Winds. They are a fun group. And they make the least irritating noise. <laughs> <laughs> they can be quiet, but they, they do wear shiny pants. <laughs> yes. But we have, uh, of we, have, we have a louder group coming pretty soon. The East Winds are very active uh, around the Twin Cities. You know, an important part of what uh, each of these groups do is they recruit uh, every year for the uh, the following year and do a lot of work training and getting them ready so they do the terrific job they do in the community and for Winter Carnival every year. Typically, they're put forward by the uh, Payne Arcade Business Association. Oh, all right, that's good. Well, here we have the West Winds, the loudest of the uh, brothers. Yeehaw. These cowboys represent the dependable West Wind. In the legend, the West Wind was the only brother that has never defected to the Vulcans. Former, we have former West Winds here and their families. They support the city in Winter Carnival. They also recruit members uh, and, and do all the training. They are the protectors of the legend of Zephyrus and the custody of the West Wind. Typically, they're known as the trustworthy West Wind. So I'll tell you, you always uh, you always feel good having a West Wind at your side. Yeah, that's true. I always feel like I need earplugs. Yeah, you don't want to get on their bad side. That's for sure. <laughs> Those guys do a great job, and they do hey. a lot of giving back to the community. Thank you. <laughs> well, everybody has necklaces this year. <laughs> wow. tell folks what that is? Yeah, so every time we go to an event and they get, they get um, introduced, we've got the South Wind Prince that'll say, Olay! And every time he gets to Olay his princess, so he will say Olay three times and she will say Ooh La La, and they're doing it right now. Ooh La La. All right, there it is. <laughs> So we've got a bunch of the former um, South Winds and also the South Wind Princesses, former South Wind Princesses, as well as some visiting royalty, it looks like. 
So they're having some fun on the Southwind bus. So can you see who's up there from visiting royalty? I believe that that's um, Hopkins. You know, folks, just so you know, in visiting uh, royalty, we have with us this week the Wild West of Riverton, Wyoming, Fiesta San Antonio, Texas, Hernando de Soto from Bradenton, Florida, Macon, Georgia, Cherry Blossom Festival, Minneapolis Aquatennial, La Crosse Oktoberfest, South Dakota Snow Queen Festival, Springtime Tallahassee, Tallahassee, Florida, and our friends from Festival de Vosier, all the way from Winnipeg, Manitoba. So yeah. there's, uh, it's pretty impressive when you realize all of the people that participate. And it's actually South St. Paul royalty that's, that's oh, visiting with them, South St. Paul. Paul. Great, that's fabulous. <laughs> we have the Winter Carnival twins here, always join us, yes. good to see them. <laughs> They're having some fun. Well, here comes, uh, King, here comes your group, the ones that the uh, protectors. These are the great protectors right here, I'll tell you. So this is the Order of the Royal Guard. The Order of the Royal Guard is in their 100th year of protecting King Boreas and the Queen of Snows from the Vulcans. Formed just after World War II, when Boreas realized his uh, dominion was lacking a proper army to defend his realm against Volcanus Rex and the dastardly crew, uh, riding today are the past guards along with friends and family. Hail the guard. Hail Boreas. They always have the best tunes, I have to say. You always just, it makes you want to dance, and you can see the crowd starting to dance along with them. I think the shock absorbers might be going on that truck. <laughs> Tell you, they have that guard trooper, and uh, we had that this year in the Aquatennial Parade. And I'll tell you, you want to bring some fun to a parade, just bring that guard trooper. What is a trooper? I don't really it's know. It's actually an old military know. truck. It's an old army truck that they painted. Really? Yeah. Well, that's yep. pretty cool. That's what it is. But you know, we outdid everybody. We got a new fire truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Colin came through for us. I said, I want a really shiny red one. <laughs> I have a we can't have a big shiny red one for the Winter Carnival, you know, so. Uh, I have a very jealous four-year-old grandson. All right, so here we, uh, this is our, uh, I think we're gonna have our board chair in here, if she had time to get in the parade. Doesn't look like she made it. Jen uh, Tamburo has been very, very busy. It's a board chair this year. She's the 200, no, is she in there? No. Uh, I don't see her. She's I'm a 2005 her. East Wind Princess. Yeah. She's done a fabulous job. Oh, she's right there, fabulous. she's right there, there she's she walking. Is. So Jen, uh, <laughs> walking with the Jen. So Jen, we're talking oh, about what Jennifer a good job you did. Hi, Jen. And she appears to be walking with some Vulcans today. I'm yeah, not I don't sure know what exactly happened. how to explain that, but. Uh, <laughs> Have you been kidnapped? <laughs> <laughs> and she's got her family with her in the basket. Under Jen's leadership this year, we uh, we were able to build that ice palace. So a deep thank you to uh, to Jen for all her work on that. Well, Jen's been uh, I saw her on TV this morning. She's been uh, she's been everywhere. She's not only done a great job with that, but she's really gotten it out there. It was pretty impressive yesterday when the uh, ice palace was on the front page of both the uh, Pioneer Press and the Star Tribune. Well, folks, you got a lot of Vulcans coming here. We have the uh, St. Paul Vulcans Four Horsemen uh, 2012 crew. Steve Robertson was Volcanus Rex for them. Steve was also a uh, Commodore. Then we've got the 2011 True Grit crew, Spill the Beans. Tom Erickson was Volcanus Rex as well, and his crew. So here, this is a little presumptuous, I think. A 2018 Vulcan victory dance. I mean, how do you schedule a victory dance when you haven't won? It does seem like they're uh, just getting a little bit ahead of themselves yeah. on this one. But I, mean, uh, I will say, I remember from last year, it actually is a pretty fun time. It's a fun time. I suppose if you have 131 to zero, you, you're pretty confident. Yeah, I kind of say that off the record. But, uh, well, if you haven't bought tickets, you want to buy tickets. It's a lot of fun. Vulcan, uh, and I'll tell you, even if Vulcan loses, they'd still have the dance, so there's no risk <laughs> buying those tickets. <laughs> well, they're selling out. tickets right now. And 
then we've got the 2013 Vulcan crew with Paul Knudsen as the Volcanus Rex and his crew. That includes Tom Miller, Greg Smith, Alex Sadowski, Mark Fox, Ron Palmy, Ivan Weiss, and Joe Bodel. So, well, we also have right here, we have uh, some members of DeSoto. Yes. Yeah. Uh, coming Bradenton, all the way Florida. Up Bradenton, Florida. So how do you like the weather? <laughs> <laughs> but they have winter jackets, so that tells me, that tells me something. <laughs> Good to see you, thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, what a spectacular festival they have. It's a five mile parade. Yeah. And I just, I, I could not believe how big it was, how thrilling it was, it was awesome. So we have 2014 Vulcan crew, Jim Green, Volcanus Rex. We have uh, Natalka here. Natalka yes, does we all love the Natalka. work. Natalka was a captain with me in uh, 2009 in the Aquatenio. Natalka Kamarczyk. They just keep here coming, don't it. they? Well, we, we have another Vulcan truck we coming do. up, and we I do. can already see that we have some uh, members from the Tallahassee, Springtime Tallahassee oh, crew on great. here. Another festival we visited this year that was just spectacular. Uh, this would be uh, Andrew Jackson uh, celebrating the periods of history in Florida. This is a 2016 Vulcan crew. Uh, John Uttermo is the... Uh, Actually, this is the 2018. Oh, this is... Tw no, that's the sponsoring 2018. Oh. Uh, oh, and here they are. The 2018 Vulcans. Volcanus Rex, the god of fire. This is the enemy of Boreas right here. He's been known to say, by the great sword of Mars, I will temper the blusterings of Boreas with heat and war of my forces. Volcanus and his crew are tireless in their bitter resistance to the festivities of Boreas and celebrating all things winter. You know, I'll tell you though, the temperatures are changing. I don't know, Vulcan, it seems, to, it seems like Boreas is bringing the cold. Well, it's cooling off for the Grand Day Parade, which, which it should. So here we have a quiet, uh, the Royal Order of the Klondike Cates. I think they're gonna sing for you. We've got 2018 Klondike Kate, Natalia Hemingway of St. Louis Park. She's had beauty, charm, and a man who has done her wrong. She was Kathleen Rockwell, and she made her way across the mountains to Dawson City and the gold fields around the Yukon and Klondike Rivers, just as many did during the gold rush of 1898. Part of our hot air balloon team coming right past us here. I'll tell you those. Uh, I hate to admit that flame actually feels kind of good. And here we've got the visiting ambassadors because it's Queen's weekend with the Winter Carnival. This is a long group consisting of 90 ambassadors from cities and towns across both Wisconsin and Minnesota. These ambassadors were elected to their positions by interviews, essays, and other means. They're excited to be here at the coolest celebration on earth. Hello, ladies. Welcome. Mm. It's fun to have you every year. As part of our role with the uh, 2017 family, we had an opportunity to go to many of the coronations in which these young ladies were selected for these roles. Mm -hmm. And it's so fun to see all these familiar faces and, and uh, they've done a bang up job representing their communities. Yeah, for those of you who are not familiar with it, the communities have their own royalty. And uh, oftentimes uh, those young ladies are juniors and seniors in high school. Yeah. And they get a great opportunity to learn public speaking, uh, leadership skills and get out in the community. Well, kids, do you know what this is? I think this maybe is self-evident. What do you think? <laughs> this is from the movie Trolls. And I know I have two stepsons. They love that movie. I personally love the movie. It has a great storyline to it. We're glad to have them out here today. <laughs> Thank you, Trolls, for being with us. <laughs> well, we got a fun group coming up. This is KDWB's Dat Brass Doe Band. It's an all-brass band led by Dave Ryan of KDWB, another sponsor uh, and participant every year in uh, Winter Carnival. Dave Ryan in the morning show. This band's made up entirely of KDWB listeners of all abilities. They're very proud and happy to be part of St. Paul Winter Carnival Parade. We're proud and happy to have you back. And it looks like next 
up, we're going to have the U.S. Marine Corps. Just following KDWB. This is the Honorary Marine Corps. And the Honorary Marine title reinforces the special bond between the American people and the ports by recognizing individuals in the civilian community who have made extraordinary contributions to the Marine Corps. The title Marine is a revered designation that affords a special distinction to those who earn it. Therefore, only the commandment of the Marine Corps, CMC, can officially designate an individual as an honorary Marine. And I know my mom used to always say to me, Semper Gumby, which means the Marines say that for always flexible. So I know they always have to be flexible because they never know when, when they're going to be called into duty. The few, the proud. Well, here, here comes that group. We were trying to remember what the name of that town was. Uh, I, it's on the sheet here. The Minneapolis <laughs> Aquatennial Ambassador Organization. Well, you know these folks. Yes, absolutely. This? They're just across the river. We've got the Queen of the Lakes, Vanessa Gonzalez, and we've got the two princesses as well. We've got the Commodore, and we've got uh, Kenny and Quentin. Oh, and then we've also got the senior uh, royalty as well. Yeah, we have uh, Commodore Jim, we have Senior Queen Susan, Vice Commodore Leo, and Princess Jerry. The, this is always a fun group that joins us every year, the Commemorative Air Force Minnesota Wing. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about them. Absolutely. The uh, Commemorative Air Force. Uh, the Minnesota Wing was formed in 1971 to honor the contributions of our servicemen and women to the nation's history and to preserve that history for our future generations. Their hangar and museum are open to the public Wednesdays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and admission is free of charge. Donations are always welcome and appreciated when visiting. The visitors will have an opportunity to get close and rare collection of military aircraft, ground vehicles, and other artifacts from World War II, Korea, and Vietnam War eras. A living history flight experience can be purchased in the gift shop for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to actually fly in a real warbird. As an all-volunteer 501c3 nonprofit organization, the members donate their time, talent, and labor and all their financial support. That's Thanks for being with us today. Great vehicles. It's fun to see this. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. We appreciate having you every year. It's a lot of fun to see. You see vehicles have changed quite a bit, kids. Yeah, it looks like we've got an old Navy car right over here. Yes. Those were staff cars. Those are, uh, you had to be uh, high rank to ride in those. You know, you have to imagine in some of the uh, early Grand Day parades, this is probably the sight that they were seeing was these vehicles like this coming along and during wartime or pre-war time. And mm -hmm. Have you ever driven a Willys Jeep? I never have. It's uh, the one I drove had a clutch that took two two legs to put down. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was it was exhausting to drive the thing. <laughs> but they're they're a pretty reliable and rugged uh, a rugged uh, vehicle. But I was always impressed that Radar O'Reilly sent an entire Jeep home to his family one piece at a time. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's a lot more to see at the museum and the hangar, so it'd be we really a great place to take the kids. We, we need to always remember what's happened in the past. We'll learn a little bit more about U.S. history. But well, we have a real fun group coming up. You, I bet you went and saw these. Did you get uh, down to Northfield? Oh, I'll tell you, this was quite a uh, quite an experience. Uh, Northfield obviously is uh, the beginnings of the defeat of Jesse James, and they celebrate that once a year with a uh, a live reenactment right down on the uh, right in the middle of the city. And uh, we went down for their coronation, their parade. We felt so welcome, and had a chance to see that uh, reenactment. But. A lot of defeat. fun people, a lot of fun oh, people. Oh, absolutely, there, yeah. and such good history. And they're very active in both uh, Aquatennial and Winter Carnival. We've had... Uh, well, in fact, our last two Queen of the Queen, Lakes for yes. Aquatennial have both come out of Northfield. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. So they have quite an, quite an amazing program. When does it happen? That's a great question. It happens the weekend after Labor Day. And they definitely invite you to come down and celebrate with them the defeat of Jesse James Days. Witness for yourself the guns blazing and the failed robbery attempt by the James Younger gang, along with lots of other great activities, including rodeo, arts and craft shows, car shows, and more. I love one of their uh, claims. It's the, uh, there's something for everyone. This is the largest all-volunteer celebration in Minnesota. I, I think we could argue that. Here's Captain Kent's Captain. 1923, Aaron's Fire Fox uh, antique fire engine. 
Yeah, served in the St. Paul Fire Department from 1923 to 1954 and has appeared in the Winter Carnival Parade since 1981. The Highland Central Capital Squirt C team is with the marching band with the fire engine today. I'll tell you, as King Morris, when I'd hear that uh, siren come, I always figured it was the Balkans, and I was sort of relieved when I realized it was Captain Ken. <laughs> And right here we have the St. Paul Regional Labor Federation. St. Paul Regional Labor Federation unites more than 55,000 union, union members in Ramsey, Washington, Dakota, and Chisago counties in the East Metro area. Although the work that union members do has changed throughout the years, our commitment to improve our community is constant. Greater Twin Cities United Way and Organized Labor have partnered for over 60 years to make our community a better place to live, work, and retire. Looks like we got another royalty group coming up in I think St. we've got Michael. St. Michael coming, yeah. don't we? Mm -hmm. So did you get to St. Michael? I, I work a little bit in St. Michael, so I'm there. I'm there, and well, I know um, our family got to go to the parade. Then okay. tell us a little bit about it. Well, the St. Michael Royalty is a brand new organization this year that travels around Minnesota to participate in many parades with other royalty, donate their time to better communities and earn college scholarships. The first ever court includes Evangeline, Liana, Helen, and Jordan, Emily and Brianna, Annalise Nielsen. Thank you, St. Michael. Well, here, welcome the Adopt a Husky with Husky Huddle and Malamut Mingle. This Adopt a Husky is a 501c nonprofit Siberian Husky rescue organization. They're devoted to rescuing and rehoming abandoned and stray Siberian Huskies through a network of foster homes. With the help of their volunteers, they've successfully placed close to 2,000 dogs since 1998. The dogs range from 12 years of age to puppies that are born in their care. Adopt a Husky works with shelters and animal control in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois. Beautiful dogs. Aren't they though? I'll tell you, I think we should have some sled dog races for this uh, winter carnival. That just kind of looks right when you see those Huskies going by. Well, I'll be happy to watch. <laughs> <laughs> or judge it, maybe. <laughs> We've got some big ones out there. Those are big, wow. Are those more Huskies? Small bears. Are those are the, what, maybe those are the Malamutes. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I bet you that's what a Malamute is. Former, uh, it's a form of bear, I think. <laughs> well, here comes Woodbury coming along. I'll tell you, this is one active group. I yeah. think they were at most of the parades that we hit this year. And uh, talk about just some genuine spirit. Yeah, and um, this is actually celebrated Woodbury Days in the last weekend in August. And we've got with us today Miss Woodbury, Megan Rice, Princess Al Alana and Isi, Little Miss Woodbury, Anya, Little Miss Princess, Kennedy and Emma, as long as some amazing volunteers that make it all happen. And this year's West Wind uh, comes from Woodbury. Daryl is a big, big uh, uh, volunteer at Woodbury. They're the Hylax Gnomes. They've been marching uh, since the 1940s. The gnomes are on loan from uh, Westcott Station Antiques. So they keep the gnome, the keeper of the gnomes. And I think we have Boy Scout uh, Troop 13 is providing the leg power since 1946. Trying to keep my I'll tell you, this to... really brings Carnival right back to its origins here with these gnomes. I mean, they've been in since the beginning. It's pretty awesome. Somebody's gone to a lot of work to keep them uh, keep them up. It's great to see that. Now we've got the Western Saddle Clubs Association. Here are the ambassadors for the Western Saddle Clubs Association representing the five state area. We've got the Queen Princess, Miss Horsemanship, Miss Games, Miss Congeniality. They promote horses as a fun family activity as their main goal. We've got some military back here. We do. This Next is coming it. up is our U.S. Army, Army Reserves and the U.S. Army Reserve Association. These historic military vehicles from the U.S. Army Reserve Association and Battlefield History Team. Yeah, and I actually come from a military family. My mom was in the Army for 37 years active duty, and she would bring in these big trucks to school when I was younger to let the kids crawl through them. So they always thought I was a little bit cool because I had the cool mom, you know. I, I, think, I think I <laughs> read how you described it. I don't know. How, how did you describe yourself in that interview? A military mutt. I kind of grew up everywhere. Yes. Yeah, I was born in Nashville, and we moved to 
um, Texas and Minnesota and Oklahoma and Minnesota and back to Oklahoma and then back to Minnesota. So here I am today. <laughs> Thanks to the military. That's great. <laughs> I have a daughter uh, and son-in-law. He's in the Air Force. She's now uh, finished and they're moving around quite a bit too. Well, we have the Albertville Royal Program. Who do we have with them today? Looks like uh, we've got the Queen, Princess, and the Juniors. Albertville's always a, a participant and a lot of fun to go visit the, their festival. I love their flow and it's so much fun. And it looks like we got the bouncing team coming up next. This is a perennial favorite at, uh, at the parades. And uh, Jason, I think it's a tradition for the uh, king to jump off the end of the truck into the uh, <laughs> bouncing. Is that right, Tom? I, yeah. I guess I didn't realize that. It's but, new. Uh, it's new. But I'm sure a new tradition? It'll, it'll be popular. Wow. <laughs> that would be something, wouldn't See it? Seaborious fly. Well, the St. Paul Bouncing Team is the only known organization of its kind in the world. The St. Paul Bouncing Team consists of several stout men, a customized blanket, and encourages young women. The members of this uh, team use a blanket to propel the St. Paul Bouncing Girl upwards of 25 to 35 feet in the air, where she performs flips, tricks, aerobatics. This feat is repeated several times throughout the appearance, and much to the delight of tens of thousands of spectators who come to watch the bouncing team. This is one of the few things that has gone back to the very beginnings of the Winter Carnival Parades and the Grand Day Parade. They performed in the first parade, and they have recently been the commission to perform at the Super Bowl. Wow. So if you get to the Super Bowl, cheer them on. They actually threw me up in that last year. This, oh, this day it? last year. Oh my gosh, it was a lot of fun. I thought my crown was going to come off. But it didn't. You got some pretty, you uh, pretty serious I got some air good air. Pretty, yeah. I bet. Yeah. It looks, uh, looks a little high. Yeah. yeah. They said 25 to 30 feet up in the air. So is there a weight limit on that? That's a great question. Wow. I think as strong as the men are. <laughs> Well, we got a fun uh, float coming up here. Yeah, it looks like we have the Cottage Grove Strawberry Festival. Royal ladies, the Cottage Grove Strawberry Fest ambassadors are excited to celebrate Winter Carnival. Over the past five years, the Strawberry Fest ambassadors have won numerous parades awards and participated in over 125 events each year. The 2018 ambassadors, we have Miss Princess, uh, Emily, we've got Miss Queen Julia, Junior Miss Queen Elizabeth, Junior Miss Princess Dakota and Bryn, Little Miss and Queen Mio, Little Miss Princess Trinity, and all are invited to celebrate the Cottage Grove Strawberry Fest held next June. And you've probably seen Little Miss Mio around. She travels around all the time going to a bunch of different carnival events throughout the year. So we always love running into her. She's probably uh, Winter Carnival's biggest fan, Great. I would say. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you, that was a hot parade this year. Oh. You know, this next community, uh, I'm not sure I want to go there. What is this? <laughs> oh, the Ramsey County Sheriff's Fright Farm Haunted House. Absolutely, the uh, Fright Farm Haunted House, the legendary horror experience. Frequently named by local media amongst the best and scary haunted attractions in Minnesota. Exploring frightening scenes that blend of humor, local legend, and folklore. Located in Maplewood, the Minnesota Fright Farm Haunted House is open Friday and Saturday nights in October. Visit www.frightfarm.org for more information. I think they hit most of the parades with us this year, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. They go around all year long. <laughs> Building up the anticipation. Celebrating Fright 365. And next, we've got the University Club. The University Club of St. Paul, located at 420 Summit Ave, is one of the oldest private clubs in St. Paul and is home to the best backyard in the city. The University Club has amazing family programming, including Camp U Club, Hands On Sundays, Family Fun Nights, and more. Stop by for a tour and discover what you and your family have been missing. I think University Club was kind of a, uh, a famous hangout for F. Scott Fitzgerald, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. Kind well, of going back to history. Right in that area. Yeah. Yes. That's uh, interesting to read about him. Yeah. So what do we have here? 
New Brighton Stockyard Days. Yeah. yeah, we've got the New Brighton Stockyard Days Royalty. New Brighton Stockyard Days was established in 1889. Although they no longer exist, they contributed to the history of the New Brighton community. And their festival is actually celebrated August 5th through the 13th, and that will be this year in 2018. The float measurements are 50 feet long, 8 feet wide, and 12 feet high. And we've also got the New Brighton Ambassadors, Ambassador Danielle, Sarah, Sophie. Our junior ambassadors are Chloe, Madison, and Elena. You know, this is an uh, interesting uh, heritage. They used to bring all the uh, cattle into uh, New Brighton, and after driving them, they would rest there, water them, feed them, and get their weight back up <laughs> before they brought them in to be slaughtered. Oh. The, uh, and then they'd come into St. Paul, South St. Paul, for slaughtering. So uh, that's, that, that's why the stockyards were out there. I was always wondering about that. Yeah, I've always been suspicious. It must have been a suburb of Minneapolis since they did that to St. Paul. Well, folks, we've talked a lot about volunteerism today. A lot of the folks you see here are volunteering. Everyone on these uh, floats that you see, those are all volunteers. You see volunteers around. There's a lot of great things happening this week. I, I, don't, I think it's going to be hard to find a week like this ever again in Minnesota between what's happening in St. Paul and what's happening for the Super Bowl. And I think we're going to have a lot of people in St. Paul who come to the Super Bowl to see the ice or come here to see the Ice Palace. Hopefully we have some of you here today who came, uh, came to see the parade, uh, the ice sculptures. It's just a lot of fun. Obviously, we have plenty of activities going on, and, and it's uh, definitely a good time in St. Paul and a good time to be here. So it be great to welcome all these visitors coming in. Yeah, we've also got some great food over here in Rice Park. I saw some cheese curds earlier, and they've also got a store over there with Winter Carnival gear. People well, you can, better stop you're kind of there. a cheese curd fan, aren't you? Please? I love cheese curds. Yeah. I will eat them any time of day, anywhere. <laughs> you I, give I, me a cheese curd, I will take it. <laughs> I don't think you can believe anyone who says they don't. <laughs> you know, when I lived in Oklahoma at the Oklahoma State Fair, there was one cheese curd stand, and I ran up, and they were from Wisconsin, and I said, I just need all of your cheese curds. <laughs> I will eat all of them, and I was giving them to everyone because it, they're not as big, you know, down there. They're, what is that, you know? You felt right at home. I had to, to spread the, the love. I had Folks to spread here, the love. Welcome the uh, All Energy Solar. They're proud to have helped hundreds of homeowners and business owners throughout Minnesota to start saving with solar energy. Uh, they look forward to seeing if they can make the uh, sun work for you at your house. <laughs> oh, uh oh. <laughs> He's going for you. You? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I play oh. for the Vikings. <laughs> you got another one? You want to throw another one? <laughs> throw his ball back. All right. Well, well I see now, some Packers. Here comes a fun group. The, uh, and you know, I, I don't think Oktoberfest is not fun anywhere. But uh, Oktoberfest is, is probably one of the neatest festivals. Uh, we just came off of doing that one. Obviously, it's at the end of September, interestingly enough. And uh, it is a wonderful parade, very long. Uh, the Oktoberfest float includes 2017 and 18 royal family members. Miss Lacrosse, Oktoberfest, Madeline Coombe, Festmaster Brian Rood, Frau Karen Rood, Mr. Oktoberfest, Dan Grunlash, Mrs. Oktoberfest, Lynn Grunlash, Grenadier Generals Terry and Jeff Hankey, Board President Angie Cohen, and Paul Cohen. This is one fun festival, I'll tell you what. They, that town just turns out, everybody's there. It's beautiful. We well, gotta res uh, respect anybody who wears shorts in uh, January. Now we have the Harding High School NJROTC Navy Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps. Welcome the uh, Naval Junior Reserve folks. Yeah, and then it looks like we have uh, the community of Farmington coming up next, and that's actually where I live, so. I'm uh, partial to Farmington. I love Farmington. And um, I actually used to be Miss Farmington. That's kind of how I started off. I was mentioning earlier that I saw uh, Queen of the Snows for the first time at a St. Paul Saints game, but I was Miss Farmington at the time representing. So that's why you went. That's yeah. great. What so year was that? That was 2007, <laughs> so a little over 10 years ago. <laughs> 10 years is a short time yeah. for me. <laughs> I'm older than I look, I suppose. 
Now the Farmington Ambassador Program consists of to provide opportunities for involvement in local and surrounding areas to support the growth and development of young women and girls in the city of Farmington. The program's intent is to teach skills that will be invaluable throughout life. They invite us all to join them at Farmington Due Days, which is the third week of June each summer. And today they have the visiting royalty of Miss Lexi, Miss Shannon, Miss Claire, Junior Ambassador Maddie, Junior Haley, and Little Ambassador Riley, Little Ambassador Cicely. So we're excited to have Farmington here with us today. So now we've got the uh, pizza shop of West St. Paul coming, and apparently some people who ate too much pizza, and what happens to you if you do? <laughs> the best pizza in town. They have a car show every Thursday night at 5. Bikers are welcome. They're driving in a uh, 1917 Model TT Ford one-ton truck. That's the first year that Ford made a one-ton truck. So make sure you stop by at uh, 1037 Dodd Road in West St. Paul and have some great pizza. It is some tasty pizza they have there. This is Minnesota Crump House right behind them. Krampus behind them. <laughs> I thought they were with the pizza shop. <laughs> they were a late entry. Okay. The, uh, <laughs> They've been with us before many times, though. At the Litchfield uh, Watercade Festival. So here we have our royalty, uh, Miss Litchfield, Maddie Larson, Princess Hannah Sh Shockerer, Princess Courtney Smith. They invite you to join them for their annual Litchfield Watercade celebration this July 12th through the 15th, featuring Grand Day Parade and the Royalty Coronation. Their float is pretty awesome. It looks like a beautiful boat. It almost goes along well with the Aquatennial. And they've got presents on there too, so it's a good contrast. So there's a lot of festivals, especially right around the 4th of July. Uh, just great festivals at all the different lakes and communities as you go, certainly west of uh, the Twin Cities. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, whiz bang days coming up here. Yep, with Robbinsdale. And they are celebrating their 70th annual festival whiz bang days, the second weekend in July. Whiz bang days is a community sponsored city celebration that honors Robbinsdale's a small town caring attitude in Captain Billy's whiz bang publications that it was founded for. We also have um, our lovely royalty, Miss Robbinsdale Becky, Robbinsdale Princesses. Brittany, Ambassadors Hannah and Natalie, and Junior Ambassador Taylor Underwood. We're so excited to have them here with us today. Right behind them we have Babe Wants to Axe Out Cancer. GoFundMe.com, Axe Out, slash Axe Out Cancer Donations. They'll go to the Randy Shaver Cancer Research and Community Fund. And CarSoup.com is with us this year. CarSoup.com has been providing Minnesota car shoppers with an easy to find, easy to save car shopping experience for over 20 years. Proud to be local, CarSoup is Minnesota's number one car shopping site. Check out the all new CarSoup.com today. I kind of want to drive that car. It looks like they're driving a Mini today, huh? <laughs> That's a Fiat. Oh, that is a Fiat. That's a Fiat. And then it looks like just behind them we have the Invergrove Heights royalty coming up. Now their festival is over, um, it's in July, it's actually uh, around uh, the middle of July, I would say the beginning of July. And we have Miss Invergrove Heights, Hannah Litz, Miss Invergrove Heights Princess, Felicia Bisman, Junior Miss Invergrove Heights, Ashley Van Kempen, Junior Miss Invergrove Heights Princess, Grace Westfall, Little Miss Invergrove Heights, Piper Larson. Little Miss Invergrove Heights, Princess Cheyenne Smith. And our captain's wife was a former Miss Invergrove Heights. Oh, and, cool. and actually, last year's queen is now a Vikings cheerleader. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So now we have the uh, St. Paul Yacht Club. Remind us all of uh, warmer days. The St. Paul Yacht Club has been in service since 1912 on Harriet Island. They're a nonprofit operated by the members and dedicated to safe and affordable boating for all. 
They have a slip available for uh, small craft uh, to 50 foot uh, crafts. They're open to the public for your water sports enjoyment. They encourage families to discover the beauty of this great river in our hometown. They love the Mississippi River. Celebrating 106 years, it says. Hello. <laughs> they look like they're having fun. <laughs> So what do we have here coming up? Is this the Pepper Fest? Yeah, this is the North Pepper Fest, North Hudson Pepper Fest Royalty. In North Hudson, they celebrate their community's strong Italian heritage. The festival was originally put on by a group of neighbors to raise funds to build an elementary school. The monies raised are still donated locally each year. The three-day festival still continues. It is filled with many fun events, including a parade, bands, and numerous food and eating contests. Join them August 18th through the 20th. We've got Princesses Shannon Bayer, Morgan Kellenbeck, Claire Courtney, King Eric Anderson, and Queen Emma Newman. Well, I'll tell you, for a small town like North Hudson, they put on a serious festival. It is just a blast. Everybody turns out for it. There's people that come in from Florida just to go to that festival. Wow, it is fun. Well, we've got a great movie coming up here, Rascal Peter Rabbit. It's in theaters uh, February 9th. Peter Rabbit, the mischievous, mischievous and adventurous hero who has captivated generations of readers, now takes on the starring role in his own irreverent contemporary comedy with attitude. We have Miss Senior uh, Minnesota there. Jane uh, Lynn Lacey. She was a talk show host, model, comedian, public speaker, and actress. She's appeared in uh, 22, in over 22 films and on television. And then we have Great Northern. They're sponsors of Winter Carnival, U.S. Pond Hockey, City of the Lakes, Lopet Ski Festival. This it, next one's kind of interesting, the Autonomous uh, Snowplow Competition. I don't know if you've seen them down in Rice Park. It's the eighth annual Autonomous Snowplow snowplow competition which is now part of the winter carnival the event, event takes place in front of the st paul library in the perimeter of rice park come on down and cheer on your favorite robot we'll be carrying a banner the institute of navigation along with many other corporate sponsors are supporting the eighth annual autonomous snow competition the competition as we started to get students and companies interested in stem which is science technology engineering and math that's a lot of fun to watch Part of that is the uh, Dunwoody College of Technology and eight other teams compromise the uh, college students studying engineering. They built these robots that will plow snow independently and are completely self-guided. The teams have presented their technology in front of judges twice prior to the course competition. The competition field is located at the front of the St. Paul Library on 4th Street on the perimeter of Rice Park. Again, at 4 p.m. today, the cooperative challenge will take place with these two robots competing at the same time. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. will also be available in the last event, which is a triple one snow course. Please come down and cheer on your favorite robot. Well, in a warmer thought, we have Glenwood Waterama coming up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Glenwood Waterama is on the beautiful shores of Lake Minnewaska. We've got our royalty here. Looks like we've got Junior Queen Kaylee, Junior Princess Olivia, Second Princess Alyssa Boyson, Queen Rachel Erickson, and First Princess Anna Vold. They invite you to their celebration the last full weekend in July. Well, we have a fun group coming up here, St. Patrick's Association. They've been sponsoring the St. Patrick Day Parade in St. Paul since 1967. They're a nonprofit organization that supports the celebration of our Irish heritage and encourages families to participate in this long-standing tradition. The organization is 100% volunteer and they raise money to sponsor the parade and pass all the extra profits on to local charities. So we'll be seeing you all in March. Yeah, and actually they're, they're picking the new uh, St. Pat here soon. Yeah, next week, I think. Is that right? Yeah. This is Miss Shamrock. Thanks for joining us today. Yep, Alexandra Murdoch. 
Now we have Lake World, Ping of Prague Royalty. Yeah, we've got uh, the beautiful city of Lakeville with us, representing Lakeville Painter Prague Festival, and it's held July 4th through July 15th this year. And we have our Lakeville royalty, Miss Lakeville, Lauren Davis, Princess Sienna Swanson, Princess Kate Cox, Little Miss Danny Sandgren, and Little Master Jackson Lowen. And they have been all around the state as well this year. I remember seeing them in a ton of parades and at different coronations. So they, they do travel around and they have quite quite a fun time. I remember, Very active group. Yeah, they are. And I think for the um, Anoka Halloween parade, they did like a Grease theme where they were Sandy and Danny, the little boy. <laughs> they had a lot of fun. Well, folks, we got a lot of fun coming with the uh, Osmond Shrine. I can see down the street, I think they brought, uh, we never know what they're going to bring. Sometimes they have uh, different vehicles. The Shriners of North America totally support 22 Shrine Hospitals for Children, including our own Twin Cities Hospital. These hospitals provide specialized care to children with orthopedic conditions, burns, spinal cord injuries, cleft lip, and palate. And all of their services are provided at no charge to the patient's family. So we'll see a little bit more of them here as they come forward. And Lakeville actually has a big parade down there too. I do remember them having, having quite the lineup. Looks like we have the state fair coming. Those gophers are quite the dancers. They are definitely my favorite. <laughs> they make me smile anytime. Well, this was one fun parade that we had this year going over to Minnesota State Fair, and it was a uh, walking parade during the fair. It was absolutely spectacular. These guys were, they were blast. And I think that they actually have five people that change between those outfits. They have different events that they go to and they, they trade. <laughs> Is it uh, Queen? We have Fairchild and yeah. uh, Crest, what the name of the other one. <laughs> or two gophers. <laughs> I think the North Wind actually got to put little snowflakes on their noses last time we saw them. We know we've been talking today about traditions and long-standing traditions. Did you know that St. Paul's own Osmond Shrine Circus is the oldest consecutive running shrine circus in America? In 2018, they'll hold the 95th Osmond Shrine Circus here. Amazing. That's pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about what they do with it. You know, they, we have a shrine hospital here. All the money that they earn from that circus goes to paying for uh, children. It's always free. And they take care of some very serious problems. Burn, terrible burns, spinal cord injuries. Uh, it's pretty amazing work. Well, folks, we've talked a lot today about the things that are coming up. Make sure you uh, you join us in two weeks for the Torchlight Parade. It's always a lot of fun. In the meantime, there's so much to do. There's a lot in Rice Park. We talked about those events. You know, talk a little more about what's going on at the fairgrounds. They've got snow sculptures and kids' events. What else is uh... Yeah, they've got the Vulcan Snow Park over there, so they've got a huge snow slide. Last year, I know we got to go, and we were able to ride down the slide with other little kids that were standing in line. We kind of got to cut the line a little bit, and they have a ton of snow sculptures, snow sculptures that are out there. Up there. It's yeah, absolutely hot air spectacular. They they've been working on it for weeks. Yeah.
All right, so the Osmond Shrine is represented today by their Legion of Honor, followed by the 2018 uh, potentate, illustrious Sir Mike Nem, and his director staff. Many units that uh, parade across Minnesota during the summer are also present today. Here we have representatives of the circus, as we were talking about before, the, continue, the 95th uh, circus this year, April 5th to April 8th. You want to go see that, it's a lot of fun, and all the proceeds go to some very important uh, things at the, for the Twin Cities. <laughs> Welcome, good to see you. Shriners join us every year, what a great group. Kids, you get a little taste of the circus today as the, clown or the clowns walk through. They're always a festive bunch, that's for sure. I love when they bring out the go-karts too. That's always a uh, that's always a fun addition. To well, the I parades. think we have some of those coming. You know, some of the units that uh, come, you, you get the sheiks, the mite uh, mics, provost, clowns, direct director staff, Osmond cycles. The, the Osmond's wonderful. And they're kind of fun, uh, these clowns, because sometimes they give out little red noses, so kids really enjoy that, yes. to be able to be a clown for a minute. Well, some of the other things they have, they have a drum and bugle, bugle corps. That's been a tradition since 1921. Uh, the first time in uh, 1916, it started with nine drummers. Over 100,000 people saw the, vi the uh, victory parade on August 15th, 1945. And they play in 20 to 25 parades a year. Sometimes they join us. The, uh, we're going to see, uh, well, wait, they're coming up, I think. So if you haven't been to a circus in a long time, it's not your father's circus. They're a lot of fun to see. I, uh, I hadn't been in a while and it had changed quite a bit. It was, uh, it's a great thing, the kids will love it. Uh, the adults will love it, it's great to see. Actually for the Anoka Halloween Parade, our group dressed up as a circus and so we decorated the uh, guard truck to make it look like a Winter, Car Winter Carnival Circus. And Jason, do you wanna tell them what you were? I was the uh, pooper scooper at the end. I, I kind of felt that was uh, the best place to be. Well, so you know, there you we, go. We do what we're good at. <laughs> we, uh, we did our best. Yeah. So we have the Osmond Cy Cycle Corps with us. We see their truck here. But I think this is the, uh, the Mighty Mites. They have two 32 Ford Street Rods, 436 uh, Ford uh, Cabriolets, three Micro Cup cars. Oh, he's on two wheels over there. Wow. Oh. <gasps> so you have the uh, Osman Zagalus, and that's the Arabic word for wheel. They started in uh, 1983 as a group. Here we have the Mankato T-Birds, Osmond Shriners unit. Yeah, it's a big community of people who just love to give back. And it's so cool to see, like, they've got that sign on the side that says, Building a Better Tomorrow for Kids, and how much work they do for other people. It's really inspiring. Yeah, I don't think people realize uh, what the, the Shriners do. They. Uh, don't take a lot of credit for stuff. It's pretty amazing uh, representation from the Shriners today. I mean, talk about a group that just continues to give back and give back. Yeah. Giving us a run for our money. <laughs> Maybe there's some future Boreas in the, <laughs> in the Shriners. There you go. 
Well, folks, it's been a uh, it's been a fun parade, a great day. We had a little bit of everything. No rain. We've had rain a couple years. Right. I uh, a few I, snowflakes. I a little sun. It, I thought it was difficult to announce a parade in uh, the cold, but the rain paper sticks together in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> it makes announcing quite interesting. I hope you all join us uh, for many of the activities this the, the next two weeks. This is the uh, unusually long winter carnival and a lot of fun. Now this is the uh, Osmond Cycle Course. This is the uh, precision drill team. It's made up of Shrine Masons. Uh, they're always looking for new members with a passion for riding and performing, and I think a passion for being good at it. Probably a good, uh, good thing if you have great balance. It's got to be a little dizzy <laughs> weaving in and out <laughs> yeah, of <all> these. <laughs> it is, it is. Well, folks, uh, again, thank you for uh, for joining us at the parade. It's been a lot of fun. We want to thank uh, Engine 10, Fire Station 1, West 7th Street, and Randolph for providing us with the uh, fire engine to announce today. Colin Oglesby, thank you for uh, conning all of your uh, friends into bringing this for us. We want to <laughs> thank you for joining SBNN today for the uh, St. Paul Winter Carnival King Boreas Grand Day Parade. Be sure to join us. Uh, a week from next Saturday, not next Saturday, February 10th at 5.30 p.m. for the Torchlight Parade. We'll be over on the steps of the library uh, talking to everybody. Enjoy the rest of the 132nd Winter Carnival, the coolest celebration on earth. <laughs>